All right, so today we're diving into the world of African literature. Oh, excellent. Yeah, specifically, we're going to be looking at this article from Buzz Magazine, Top 10 African Authors of All Time. I love it. A classic listicle. Always good fodder for discussion. Exactly. And, you know, just looking at these names, it's already got me excited. Yeah, it's a diverse group for sure. Spans generations, styles, regions. Right. It's going to be fascinating to kind of see how African literature has evolved over time. Oh, absolutely. And how it intersects with, you know, all the major historical shifts and social movements that have shaped the continent. Okay, so to kick things off, let's start with someone who really needs no introduction. Chinua Achebe. A legend. Seriously. Uh. If you've even dipped your toes into African literature, you've probably heard of Things Fall Apart. It's considered like the cornerstone of modern African literature, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for good reason. It's been translated into over 50 languages. Oh, wow. Over 50. That's incredible. It's a testament to how universal his themes are. Right? Yeah, right. Like the impact of colonialism. Exactly. It gives you such a profound look at how colonialism impacted traditional Igbo culture in Nigeria. It's like you're experiencing it firsthand, you know. Through the characters, yeah. And Achebe brings, you know, this deep understanding of both cultures to the table. Right. And he wasn't just a novelist. Oh, no, not at all. Don't forget, he was a professor at Brown University and the University of Ibadan as well. So he brought that academic rigor to his writing. Sadly, he passed away in 2013. He did. But his legacy lives on massively. Absolutely. And, you know, it's amazing to me how a story written decades ago can still feel so relevant today. Like, you see echoes of those same struggles in conversations about globalization and cultural identity. It's timeless, really. Speaking of pioneers, we can't forget about Wul Swainka. Oh, yeah. The first African Nobel laureate in literature. It's amazing, right? Yeah. So what stands out to you about his work? Well, for me, Soyinka is just so fascinating because he was multifaceted. You know, he wasn't afraid to experiment with different genres like his early work, the play A Dance of the Woods. That's a powerful satire. Ah, so he used humor to kind of critique what was going on. Exactly. He was critiquing the power dynamics in newly independent West Africa, you know, using that sharp wit. And it's interesting because those critiques about governance, social justice, they still resonate today. Oh, they do. They really do. Which is what makes great literature so powerful, you know? It transcends time. Okay, now for someone completely different, let's talk about Amos Tutuola. Oh, Tutuola. Now, there was a unique voice. For sure. I find it so intriguing that he was self-taught. Yeah, his writing has this almost magical quality. You yeah. Know? It's like you're being pulled into the world of Nigerian folktales. Exactly. And he really draws from that oral tradition, right? Oh, heavily. Yoruba folklore, rich with stories and myths passed down through generations. It gives his writing that blend of realism and fantasy. Especially in his most famous work, The Palm Wine Drunkard. What a title. That's going on my to-read list for sure. You won't be disappointed. So we've talked about Nigeria. Let's shift gears a bit geographically. Kamara Lay a pioneer from French-speaking Africa. Oh, right. He brought a whole new dimension to the conversation about African literature. He did. His most famous novel, L'Enfant Noir, or The African Child, it's partially autobiographical, explores universal themes of childhood, identity. It's that feeling of being caught between two worlds, right? Beautifully captured by Lay. It's incredible, you know, thinking about how each of these authors, while connected by this shared African heritage, they bring such different experiences and styles to their writing. It really highlights the vast diversity of the continent, doesn't it? Absolutely. And as we move into the later part of the 20th century, we'll see how these themes evolve and take on new forms in the hands of, you know, even more incredible writers. OK, I'm definitely hooked. Let's hear about these later 20th century authors then. All right. Sounds good. We'll start with. Oh, how about Duna Mengestu? Mengestu, yeah. I've heard his personal story is as gripping as his novels. Oh, it is. I mean, think about it. He immigrated to the U.S. from Ethiopia as a young child. Wow. And that experience of displacement, of trying to find belonging in a new culture, it really permeates his writing. You can feel it, right? Oh, yeah. His novels, the beautiful things that heaven bears, how to read the air, they explore those complex emotions tied to memory. To the immigrant experience, that feeling of being caught between two homes. Exactly. And let's not forget, he won a MacArthur Genius Grant. Oh, wow. That's huge. It really speaks to his impact on contemporary literature. It does. Okay, next up we have Mariama Bach. 
Ba, yes. She's known for these powerful portrayals of women's lives, right? Absolutely. A Senegalese author who wasn't afraid to tackle difficult issues. Yeah, her writing really digs into themes of power, gender, inequality, things that are so relevant today. Still so relevant. It's amazing how literature can do that. Transcend time. Right. So what are some of her must-read novels? Oh, definitely So Long a Letter. And Scarlet Song. Although, sadly, she passed away before Scarlet Song was even published. Wow. But her legacy continues, you know, to inspire generations of readers and writers. It does. Okay, and in that vein, let's move on to another influential voice from West Africa, Buchi Emicheta. Emicheta. Her writing is so real, so raw. Oh, isn't it? It's like you're getting this direct look into the lives of West African women. You're right. And that's because she drew on her own experiences, didn't she? She did. A lot of her novels, Into the Ditch, Citizens of the Second Class, they offered this unflinching look at the societal expectations and cultural traditions these women navigated. While still trying to achieve their own aspirations. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing because she didn't just tell her own story. She paved the way for a whole new generation of West African women writers. She did. It's like she created this space for their voices to be heard. Powerful stuff. So who's next on our list? Let's see. Oh, how about Bessie Head? Bessie Head, yes. Her writing is so captivating. And her novels, like... When rain clouds gather, Maru, and a matter of power. Really delve into themes of exile, identity, the search for belonging. Right. And you know what I find so compelling about her work is that she explores those power dynamics, not just on a societal level, but also within personal relationships. Oh, that's such a good point. She really gets into the psychological impacts of oppression and the human need for healing. Absolutely. Okay, next up we have someone who's mastered both film and literature. Usmane Sembane. Sembane, yeah. A true creative powerhouse. He really was. Yeah. So tell me, how did he use his art to kind of spark conversation? Well, he was really focused on cultural practices and politics, especially as they related to women's roles in African society. Right. And his film Mulade is such a powerful example of that. Oh, definitely. It tackles a very sensitive but very important issue, female genital mutilation. And it shows the courage of those who stand up against these harmful traditions. Okay, last but certainly not least, we have Ngugi Wa Tiango. Uh, Yango. A name synonymous with African literature. Absolutely. His work is so deeply rooted in Kenyan history. Oh, for sure. Especially the Mau Mau struggle for independence. The Mau Mau uprising, for our listener who might not know, was this rebellion against British colonial rule in the 1950s. A very pivotal and violent period in Kenyan history. You really see those themes, you know, resistance, the fight for freedom, woven throughout Thiongo's work. Novels like Weep Not, Child. The River Between. The Grain of Wheat. I mean, mm. it's like he's giving voice to those who fought so hard for their land. Yeah. Their culture. And he also explores the complexities of identity, what it means to forge an identity in a post-colonial world. And what's so fascinating about Ngugi wa Thiongo is his decision to write in his native Kikuyu language. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a conscious choice, a statement. You know, reclaiming his cultural identity, challenging the dominance of colonial languages in literature. That's incredible. I never thought about it that way. Like, even the language you choose can be a form of activism. Exactly. And, you know, thinking about all these authors we've discussed, they really highlight the power of literature. To inspire. Yeah. To challenge conventions. To give voice to experiences that might otherwise be silenced. Exactly. And it's just the beginning. I mean, this list, it's really just a starting point. So many more authors out there. I know, right? This list is just a jumping off point. I mean, there are so many other writers, you know, both well-known and those who are maybe just emerging, who are really pushing the boundaries of African literature. It's such a vibrant literary landscape. Yeah, it is. And I think one of the biggest takeaways from this deep dive so far is that African literature isn't this, like, you know, one-size-fits-all genre. Not at all. It's this incredible tapestry of voices, styles, reflecting the continent's huge diversity. Culturally. Linguistically. It's a good reminder for us, I think, as readers, to always approach literature with an open mind. To be ready to be challenged. Right. Surprised. Maybe even a little uncomfortable sometimes. I mean, that's where mm. the real growth happens. Definitely. And another thing that's been evident is this powerful connection mm -hmm. between literature and history. Oh, absolutely. I mean, each of these authors, their stories are so intertwined with like the social and political realities of their time. It's like you're getting a glimpse into different historical periods. Different struggles. Yeah. Yeah.